I made slides, sort of. All right, so this is Grief Flex. When you want to flex, this is going to be really, really, I'm not teaching a class here. I'm just saying that this is what I glean from looking at the Grief website. So the Grief Flex, high efficiency up to 17 SEER 2s, which is like 30 SEER 1s, guys, if you have to multiply it out. 10.5 HSPF 2, which is a new standard. Sound levels down to 45 decibels. I fart at 50 decibels, so that's pretty good. Horizontal side discharge on the outdoor condenser. Conventional 24 volts AC thermostat control. That kind of jumped out. It's one of the reasons why I put it up here. So the Grief Flex uses a just standard legacy wiring, if you want to call it that, thermostat. More familiar to people. Not the communicating stat, whether that's good or bad. I don't know what your opinion is of that, each and every one of you, but there you go. It uses a regular thermostat, for lack of a better word. Eco-friendly 410A refrigerant. That's good. It's not anything that's going to explode. Although I wonder if they're going to they're have to shortly. So I don't know. Adjustable 2 slash 3 and 4 slash 5 outdoor unit options. So like a lot of the variable speed stuff, one condenser will cover a variety of capacities. Ultra high quality performance. Well, that's a little bit more. That's a little bit more of a subjective statement. So everything is objective, and then we have one subjective, ultra high quality performance. Let's go on to slide number two, guys. <laughs> uh, all right, something I saw here, the operating ranges on these are pretty extreme as far as how cold you can heat. And I was kind of wondering, because it says cooling, it goes from 5 degrees Fahrenheit to 129.2 degrees Fahrenheit. If 129.7, then you're screwed. Forget you. You're dead. At 129.2, you're covered. Heating is negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit to 75.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Which, that's pretty good, negative 22. So I was kind of wondering, like, what capacity is that at negative? One of the units is negative 5. One of them is negative 22. They said it's full capacity. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good right there. Big range, a lot bigger than you get with a random, random, random single stage machine. Let me sound that out real quick. So that was pretty good. So it had a wide range. You see it at the top says DC inverter series. So you know what we're talking about here. So let's go up to number three. At number three, I thought this was interesting right here. And I'm going to come back to a couple different things. because I got to mention a couple people in a positive way. So don't get excited. Drama. No, it's positive. Pipe flaring. Cut the connection pipe with a pipe cutter. Standard stuff. The mouth of the connection pipe should face downward. This seemed really obvious to me, and I can't tell you how many times I did this wrong. Remove burrs with the cut surface so that the chips do not enter the pipe. Remove the cutoff valve of outdoor unit. Remove the cutoff valve of the outdoor unit and take out the flare nut from the bag of indoor unit accessories. Then fit the flare nut on the pipe, blah, blah, blah. I forget the flare nut all the time. But I'm thinking that uh, when I would deburr something, how many times was I not paying attention and I deburred stuff and wasn't facing far enough downward where the stuff all fell out and maybe a few items stayed inside and then maybe 10 years later I caused a problem. And uh, no one knows about it. And I wouldn't uh, say if it was me anyway. Very well, let's go on now. Just be careful for that. <laughs> and let me see, why did I do this right here? I, I, I put this up here. Now I can't remember why I had put it up there. It says, notice, connect the pipe to the unit. Please follow the instructions stated in the figures below. Use spanner and torque wrench. So it's telling you to use a torque wrench. I think that's probably why I did it because it's spelled out there. And they're very specific about using a torque wrench and they have the actual torque that they want you to torque them down to and the vacuum instructions are like the complete opposite of this which is funny it's it's pretty funny it says confirm the tightening torque by referring to the following table i think i put that up here and hopefully that's the next thing i have up here because that is that's that's sort of the funniness about this is the fact that they for some reason they don't seem to care about the vacuum part of it but this has the pipe diameter and the tightening torque in Newton meters going from quarter inch tubing 15 to 30 Newton meters. It's a pretty big range actually. And seven eighths is 80 to 85 Newton meters. So they have a whole chart there. Newton meters is uh, not America talk. Let's put it in inch pounds and foot pounds guys. You know what I'm talking about? All right. 
and we go on farther and we're at my screen keeps jumping here. There is, yeah, this is your vacuum right here. All right. For the flex 36, the three ton unit vacuum for 30 minutes. That's not very specific for the 60 you vacuum for 45 minutes. Also not very specific. Wait 10 minutes to see if the system pressure can remain unchanged. During this time, the reading of the pressure gauge at the low pressure side cannot be larger than 0 0.005 uh, millipascals, megapascals. I think it's millipascals. I feel stupid now. MPA. Yeah. That's right, Krause. Let's get this newt meters out of here, and we're going to talk in foot pounds because we do foot pounds, bro. Slightly open the liquid valve to let some refrigerant go into the connection pipe to balance the pressure inside and outside of the connection pipe so that the air will not come into the connection pipe when removing the hose. Bam. Yes. So that's pretty interesting because as detailed as it is in other areas, this vacuum is like totally, I use the word crappy. I think it's crappy right there. So that's kind of a funny thing. And they all do that. They all do that for some reason. I don't know. That's many splits. You got to love them or you got to hate them. One or the other. It's usually one of the two. All right. So let's see. We have the standard pipe length, which I thought would be interesting as well. Standard pipe length is 25 foot. Additional refrigerant amount for extra pipe it says 0. 0.32 ounces per foot. My brain is always two thirds. Two thirds. So this is good you have this in here because otherwise I'd be throwing two thirds of an ounce per foot after 15 foot, which is typical with unitary stuff. But it's just a little bit different. That's why reading the manual is pretty important because if you go out there to set this thing and you're adding extra refrigerant, then if you added for the old way, your unitary way, you'd have way more charge in there than if you did it by the book, which is, uh, that's what we call bad in the industry. That's bad. I'm, I'm zipping through this thing, guys. I think when I put this up here, this is the electrical parameters for these units. And this has nothing to do with GREE. I just think it's good to learn about the electrical parameters of any unit. You have fuse capacity, maximum overcurrent protection, minimum circuit ampacity. The maximum overcurrent protection is like if you have a breaker on the unit, that's the biggest breaker they want you to put on it, basically. So if you go in there, it says maximum overcurrent, it says 35, and you put a 60. No, not good. Minimum circuit ampacity. That's basically how much... How much electricity your wire's got to be able to hold. <laughs> so if you have a 24 amp ampacity, minimum circuit ampacity, you know, you're going to be running a copper number 10 wire for that. But if you look down at the 60 and it's 35, you're not going to be able to run your number 10 any longer. You have to go to number eight. So fantastic. So now, you know, it's important to check these things because in some areas you guys are doing the electrical too. And some other areas, electricians are doing it. So it's important to have uh, all your bases covered. I'm moving right through these, man. I'm like a teacher or something, bro. D-series inverter series for R410A unitary split air conditioner, and they have regular thermostat wiring. Look at that. You got your outdoor unit, and you have a thermostat connected to it, and it's Y, B, W1, R, and C. So everybody that's coming over from the Goodman program will be like, this is all right. This is all right right here. Goodman. You got to love those guys over at Goodman. They make a good unit, guys. I mean, I don't care what anybody says. Did I just, did I just say that out loud? Okay. Y, B, W, 1, R, and C. So simple wiring. This is just a small tidbit of this stuff, guys. A small tidbit. 